the president of Queen's College, Mohammed El Aryan, went on CNBC last week and forecasted an unexpected event, a big financial collapse in the United States in 2022. El Aryan is a recognized voice in an otherwise corrupt financial sector as the president of Queen's College and the former CEO of PIMCO. In today's video, we will dissect his pessimistic forecast and consider the prospect of a recession in 2022. But first, if this is your first time at the Smart Stocks Academy channel, let me welcome you. Also, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and click the notification bell next to it to be the first to know when we have a new video. So if you're ready, let's get to the topic. First and foremost, we must dissect something really significant. The backbone of the economy is this. The Federal Reserve's policies is largely responsible for America's financial future. For example, in the previous 15 years, the United States has had the largest bull market in history. While some may attribute the majority of this to innovation and productivity, there is a significant risk associated with this unprecedented increase. It happened at a time when interest rates were near zero and the government was pouring trillions of dollars into the economy artificially to ensure that every crash was averted. These initiatives have resulted in a parabolic stock market that has benefited a large number of individuals. It also created a situation where purchasing during the decline is nearly always a safe investment. Stocks only rise when the Federal Reserve is on your side during a crisis. Even a historic epidemic couldn't drive this market down. But there was one item that many people overlooked in 2018 that proved to be the market's vulnerability. You see, we witnessed something in 2018 that showed what everyone was afraid of. For the first time in years, the Federal Reserve began hiking interest rates at the end of 2015. These were little increases bringing the rate from near zero in December of 2015 to 2.27% in December 2018. But why does that matter? These four little rate rises in 2018 effectively triggered a mini recession. The SP500 returned a negative 7% that year, and there was a major stock market plunge in December. This occurrence demonstrated that even a tiny rate rise pre-COVID and pre-lockdowns was enough to bring down an otherwise strong market. It was so awful that Powell ultimately started lowering the interest rates again. In a strange coincidence, it was aided by a major health crisis in 2020, which allowed him to quickly reduce the rate to zero. And as a result, the markets have acted in this manner. This leads us to L. Arian. His most recent analysis is highly pessimistic, but pay attention to the specifics. So is, is this the right reaction, both the fiscal and the monetary reaction, to saying, OK, we're not going to react this time? Obviously, Jay Powell is looking at this differently because he thinks at this point it, it could really spike inflation if we react the same way we did in the past, um, that this is more problematic, which means you're not going to get the same playbook. So it's certainly the right monetary policy reaction because we have inflation that's proven to be higher and more persistent than many expected. And it's very difficult for the central banks to remain in uber stimulative mode when inflation is an issue. On the fiscal side, that's a political issue. And you've been talking about it all morning. That's really a political issue. Um, my view, and I know that not everybody agrees with this, is that the soft infrastructure is as important as the hard infrastructure in order to will increase labor force participation, in order to increase the supply responsiveness and productivity of the economy. But that's become irrelevant because of the politics. So El Arian is effectively declaring that the Fed no longer has investor support. According to his assessment, Jay Powell will be obliged to raise rates in order to contain inflation which he previously believed would be brief or transitory. Powell is considerably more comfortable making Hawker's remarks now that he has been reappointed by the president. 
the Fed has repeatedly denied the prospect of inflation. But the tide has finally changed. Not only has it gotten much more difficult to ignore, but Powell's position has also been secured. We see the Federal Reserve now admitting to the problem that has been staring them in the face the entire time, but they had previously dismissed or downplayed. Now bring everything together with what I mentioned before. The Fed hiked rates four times in 2018, resulting in an almost 20% drop in the stock market by the end of the year. This test has already been conducted, and the American market has failed badly. Since then, things have only gotten worse in terms of fundamentals and another round of rate rises will likely end in the same way, especially given the current geopolitical challenges. Without the Fed's support, the stock market is doomed. The proof is immediately in front of our eyes, even if analysts won't admit it. To get a glimpse into the future, all you have to do is glance back at 2018. If the Federal Reserve raises interest to manage inflation, things will become very nasty very quickly. When challenged by Becky, the CNBC anchor, L. Arian reiterates this point. Give it a listen. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see much more fiscal and monetary action going forward. And I think the marketplace has to get used to this. It was easy to put aside all the economic concerns, all the COVID concerns, all the geopolitical concerns, because we had almost guaranteed injections of liquidity. They were massive and they were predictable. What is changing is you can no longer bet on that. And now the market has to realize that they have to price in fundamentals and and, and they have to differentiate much more between names. So this is gonna be a very different year 2022 than 2021 was. Meaning you can't count on all the same old things that you should buy every dip, that there is no alternative. What, what does that mean for investors? So that's going to be what's going to be tested is do you still have that conditioning when you don't have the support of predictable injections that, of, that help push the everything rally? That's the big test as to whether the conditioning will persist. It is already weaker. We see this in how the market has been behaving. Um, and it's understandable because the Fed is no longer there because of inflation. So there you have Mohammed forecasting a stock market crash in 2022. Multiple rate hikes and a withdrawal from QE would very surely result in a downturn, even if he doesn't say so explicitly. That sentiment is shared by every sensible economist. However, there is an issue with all of this. In my judgment, the Federal Reserve will not raise interest rates. In fact, it is more probable that they'll go all in and pump more cash into the system. Jay Powell, as I've already stated, is caught between a rock and a hard place. Keep the rate at zero and inflate the currency or raise it and ruin the economy. So far, he's always chosen the latter, and I don't see that changing in 2022. Indeed, there are several reasons for the Feds to continue printing, including the forthcoming midterm elections, geopolitical tensions, and new varieties. No sensible politician or influential person with billions riding on the stock market would ever put an end to this nonsense. In my case, the options are bleak. Stop it now and confront sadness, or keep it running and deal with the tremendous inflation hangover afterwards. And with that, today's video comes to a close. To express your love and support for this video, don't forget to click the like button if you haven't already. Also, subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button below. Also, hit the notification bell to be the first to know when a new video is posted. Thank you for taking the time to watch, hope you learned something. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.